completely missed. Wow. Previously, we shot a Russian slug called the Mayer bullet. What's unusual about this, it has a hole that goes all the way through it. It has internal veins. And unlike most slugs, which are very nose heavy, this thing, the center of gravity was kind of in the middle. Now, this was invented in 1963 by a guy named A.K. Mayer. And everyone in the comments section was praising the Russians for their ingenuity. I like it! I like it! However, we have a problem because I found this. This is a German design with the same internal veins in it. Same hole going through it. And as you can see, this is a very old slug. Now, it doesn't have the external veins on it, but the other features are very much the same as the Mayer bullet. If the dates that we see in this catalog by Standebach are any indicator of the age of these slugs, well, these things predate the Mayer slugs by about 60 years. Not only did Stendebach invent shotgun slugs, especially weird ones, at the turn of the century, but he also designed some unique shotguns as well. So it certainly appears that the Russian guy stole the German guy's design. We heard that before, right? Simply because of that absolutely unique internal design of these slugs. And it's very possible that he also stole the design from the, like the Brennecke or maybe the Foster's, you know, rifled slugs with that external ribbing. But I'll tell you what, for such a weird hybrid stolen design, the slugs performed absolutely amazing. Well, how do you like those subversive apples, Chief? Let's fast forward about a hundred years and finally they've come out with the Stendebach 2. This slug is slightly different. It has two external slanted veins but it still has that internal cavity and a lot of the features that we've seen on the previous Stendebach. Now the biggest difference is they completely eliminated those internal veins and that's probably because they realized they weren't doing anything at all. That's because it was assumed the airflow was going through the internal cavity when it really wasn't. Now this slug comes with its own red wadding but as you can see in our uh, preliminary tests we had a lot of problems with that wadding. The wadding was breaking apart and causing the slug to kind of lose its orientation and tumble. Now because I had 100% success with the way I loaded the Mayer bullets I decided to start loading these the same way using a short wadding and a sh overshot card on top of that or a nitro card whatever you want to call it this is just made out of rubber because that white rubber card stayed stuck to the back of the mayor slugs in every shot, a lot of people thought that was a problem. But the slugs worked well, right? So how is that a problem? Now even the original Stendebach slugs were loaded just like that with a nitro card between that funky horsehair wadding and the slug. So we're really not deviating from the original way they were loaded at all, ex with the exception of using a modern plastic wadding or gas piston. And here I am just putting the roll bead on this slug. I want to thank Emiliano from Italy for sending me that roll beater. That thing works great. So let's see how these life-size potato slugs function. For the sake of consistency, once again Greg will be using his Weatherby smoothbore shotgun, the one that he used shooting the Russian mayor slugs. Wow. So far things are looking pretty positive. He hit the lead plate. It was somewhat accurate. It wasn't quite dead center at like the mayor bullet. But if you look closely, that slug was actually tumbling through the air. At the time we shot this, we just saw the end result and assumed that this was performing as well as the mayor bullet. That one definitely hit the bear. So once again, another good shot on target. And this time it actually performed well. It flew straight through the air like it was supposed to. And really that five pound gummy bear didn't slow this slug down at all it just bored a nice hole right through it and that was an accurate shot despite the shot card being stuck to the back of the slug still so this is a new wound here deep wide open you can almost climb inside that thing check that out yeah it, that is a almost, sticky gooey huge open 
exit wound. They like it when you... Oh, would I do that? Yeah. So, Ooh, oh, oh, oh. very oh. sticky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we found the slug. Okay, we were starting to feel good about these things, so we put up a smaller target. Ooh. <laughs> I think that one hit it. Erected. I think I, you guys know who ABE is up in Canada. Uh, he has his YouTube channel and a real nice guy. And he sent me this crazy rig a while back with his bulletproof glass that I think he was going to make a gigantic bulletproof flashlight. And it's, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with this slug, to be honest with you. Um, it almost looks like it's flying stable and maybe Greg just shot low. And there it shedded the uh, shot card on the back of it. We haven't seen that happen yet. Okay, red stock wadding Bioki shell. Okay, anytime. Okay, anytime. Now up to this point, we were using the kind of modified wad system that I used with the Mayer bullets, but I wanted to give another shot at trying the red waddings that come with these slugs. And unfortunately, the, once again, the slug was tumbling through the air, didn't have good ballistics, good flight, as I often call it, and uh, didn't have a really clean hit on the gummy bears. Okay, this is the one with the red wadding? Yep, red one. Okay. Okay, hit it. Okay, hit it. Yeah, that one clipped his shoulder. You'll notice in all these shots, there's a lot of smoke obscuring the shot and that just drives me crazy that's because I was using these Fiocchi shells and normally I try to use federal shells because they don't smoke like that and we still get the same velocity out of it so once again a tumbling slug from the stock red wadding okay AVE bulletproof privacy glass whenever you're ready That one whistled. Whenever you're ready. Here you can clearly see the nitro card stuck to the back of the slug. It started out flying pretty straight, then it just started tumbling, and then eventually the nitro card fell off at about 40 yards or so. So I hear you screaming, you need to shoot those through rifling, because every slug that fails that's the solution that everybody tells me I need to do. So let's see how that performs. We'll use this Benelli Nova with a rifle choke tube, giving this thing about a 34 inch barrel. It's ridiculously long. And here's a look at the sight picture. It's not a difficult shot by any means, even though this shotgun doesn't have any rear sights at all. Even a first time shooter wouldn't have a problem hitting our ballistic dummy. Are you ready? Yeah. The Stendebach 2 slugs definitely had the right tolerances to be shot through a rifle choke and we definitely had spin stabilization. However, look how far off the shot was. It was about 8 inches off. Now on a side note, notice how little smoke there is from these shells. That's because we're using federal shells this time instead of the Fiocchi's. Also, we were filming north making better use of the sunlight and you'll notice that instead of the back end of the slug being in a shadow they were actually illuminated. Little things like that make a huge difference when we're filming. The slug just missed the front panel of this ballistic vest but it actually caught the back edge of the back panel. So we're gonna bring the dummy a little closer this time. Okay that was closer to the square. Yeah, I think it was still it's off low left. left. It's, it's still going. You probably notice all the nitro cards flying outwards when we shoot these things. That's because I put about five of them behind the slug this time to give it better support. So it's it's definitely looking better. We have spin stabilization. The slugs aren't tumbling this time. But as you can see, we're not having very good accuracy. The slugs are tending to want to curve a little bit with that spin stabilization. 
That's because these slugs are designed for smooth bore shotguns, European style shotguns. So they're just proving to be very finicky slugs and you do have to get the load data, load formula just right to make them work. Looks like it hit nose first that time. Mm -hmm. There's the back. And it just completely sealed up the, the hole and everything. All right, now let's try it with no choke. So we got the most accurate and stable shot using no spin stabilization. So you have this gigantic hole in the nose of these slugs that actually goes through the slug and tapers as it goes back. So instead of amassing all the weight at the nose, you're kind of putting the center of gravity much further back, which is really contradictory of how slugs work. And in every shot, you'll see that that nitro card is sucked to the tail end of it so we know that we're not getting any airflow through there it's not glued to the back it's sucked to the back so we're definitely not relying on some kind of internal drag stabilization okay that's a little more reasonable move the tank well it crushed it that's cool wow look at that yeah look I mean, at it. the vest is is all puckered up we'll have to figure out how to from the force this was straight yeah look at that that's freaking crazy yeah, it did, didn't go through it. So that was like this. Yeah. It just, it probably wrinkled it all up. It did. It was all... Yeah, we'll see if we can get that one out of there. Yeah, I gotta so you got it out of there finally. Uh -huh. This looks promising. We don't know what it, what the, what they're doing yet in... Because we can't review the high-speed footage. But um, that's the back end of it, as you can see. I can actually... Red marking, black marking... Looked like it hit nice and straight this time. So there's, you know, apparently the, the rifle choke, a lot of people think rifling fixes every stability problem, but apparently it doesn't. It he had a fairly accurate shot. Um, it could have been yeah. off just because of, you know, just because of you know, how he shoots or whatever. Mm -hmm. Trigger squeeze, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Not stabilizing 100%, but hey, that, what, I'm just amazed when it crumpled everything. It took the tape and everything, and yeah, it's a lot. It's a tremendous force. Up. Thousands of pounds of, of like a stick poking you. You know. Did you see on this? And once again, take a close look at this slug. It looks like it, it's supposed to be shot back end first. It's so contradictory to basic aerodynamic principles, and it's just amazing that this design was conjured up over a hundred years ago. And I can imagine how much work Friedrich Stendebach did to create these slugs. Back in a time when they didn't have high-speed cameras, they didn't have wind tunnels, they didn't have a very good understanding of supersonic aerodynamics at all. And instead of designing something, you know, like boat-shaped, something that glides through a fluid very well, Stendebach went all bass backwards and designed a very unusual slug that if you were to look at it, you would think would never fly straight through the air. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.